just launched a brand new business, just invested over $120,000 into this truck, right? All the marketing, everything planned out kind of almost the whole year. Almost about to sign a big contract with Sac State University. Everything's going well out of nowhere overnight. Boom, COVID-19 shut down. Yo, what's up guys? Today I'm getting some free 99 knowledge on the food truck business, but not by myself, with the homie Paul right here. What's up guys? Yeah, from Upflip. Today, we're gonna get some free 99 knowledge from the owner of On It, Shawty, who has made six figures from this food truck, selling coffee. That's right. Has grown the business from four employees to 16 employees. That's right. And has five wives. Only two of those things are true. All right. <laughs> Believe it or not, Shawty has been able to grow a business in 2020 during the pandemic. And some of you said it was impossible, man. Crazy, right? Calm down, all right? Damn, is that excuses, bro? They, they really get to I, me, man. I know, the I know, fuck? but we're here to tell the truth. Namaste. Well, how do you say Namaste? Uh, Namaste? I'm clueless. Namaste? You know, when people are trying to relax and they go, mm. I usually do USA. USA, there we go. With, Just rub the end tails right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> this guy over here. <laughs> but you know what? He's going to share with us how he started the business so you can start your own food truck business and grow during the pandemic, sharing a lot of tips. But you know what? There was so much knowledge in this video, we had to split it into two videos. That's right, Race. So if you want to know more about the food truck business after this video, like franchising and a few other things, make sure to go watch their part two, Up Flip. Yeah, that's right, Up Flip in the description below. Go show them some love. And now, let's get on with the free 99 knowledge. We're right here outside his, uh, food truck, coffee truck. coffee truck. And you know what, let's just say there's somebody out there who wants to start a taco truck, a food truck, a drink truck. What are some tips you have for them, man? Some, tip, some tips I would have. Uh, number one, you really wanna take high quality photos of your menu. Your menu has to be key, man, you know? Uh, take quality photos, really work on your social media to promote it. Promote some, like boost some ads on Instagram. It's gonna generate more leads for you, right? Um, also location try to find a location you can park at on a regular basis so customers always know where to find you right the convenience of I know where that trucks gonna be mm. right that's very very big let me ask you do you, you have to go to the city and get a permit and ask permission or how does that so, work so it depends on yeah. if it's private property if mm. it's you know it really depends right certain certain locations you might need permission permits whatever right others you don't you know it depends on your county and where you are talk, talk to the county right yeah. talk to your officials see what the rules and regulations and ordinance laws are so once that's ready someone comes and inspects it so you have to take it to the so for, in our instance we had to take it to sacramento county to get an inspection to get you know uh the sticker and, and you know what i mean all that all the documentation needed to operate right you're gonna need a food handler's card for your whoever's operating the truck um, you're gonna need your business license, your special mm. business license. There's a, there are a lot of permits and different things you need to go through, right, through the process. Just do, do your research, uh, talk to your county, and they'll kind of give you the whole list. And then after you pass all of that, yep. you're ready to go. Ready to go, yeah. brother. You start selling, start cooking, start baking. Dang, I didn't know how hard it was to get the food truck going. This sounds harder than when I had to cross the border, and that took me three days. Hey, I'm just playing. I was born in the U.S. of A. Proud to be an American. Now you see his awesome truck, his great products, and his loyal customers. But he had to go through one of the hardest things every entrepreneur is facing right now. But of course, you're also going to see how he overcame those obstacles. Tell us your story, man. What made you get started in this? So my plan uh, was to launch a dual lane drive through in Sacramento, right? I want to build my own coffee franchise in the Sacramento area. 
Um, and I fell in love with the Dutch Brothers business model of the human to human interaction element, right? And so when I went to Dutch Brothers, I was like, man, this is different. But what I didn't like was the quality of the coffee. They didn't have vegan options. They didn't have alternative milk options, mm. not too many sugar-free options, not too many healthy options, you know? Uh, as a Middle Eastern man, born in Syria, I'm an immigrant. Uh, I came to this country with nothing. My family were farmers from back home. And so I was like, man, I wanna bring um, some high quality tea, coffee, and kind of like bring aspects of my culture to the coffee industry here in Sacramento. I spent about a year and a half looking for a lot, right? I went through 20 failed negotiations. Not one, not two, not three, 20. And what would happen is every time I try to close on a lot, whether it was to buy it or to lease, Dutch Brothers, Starbucks, McDonald's would outbid me or mm. you know they take over the deal, right? As a brand new company that isn't known, I didn't have a location before for a lease deal, right? They're like, we don't know that you're gonna be able to maintain the lease and pay like a 10 year term. That's right. He kept getting rejected and rejected more than me trying to be a Chippendale dancer. I honestly think I got rejected because of my glasses. But that's part of being an entrepreneur. The rejection, losing money on investments, the mailman, learning with your wife when you're at work. But everything happens for a reason because one day he got that great phone call. I got a call from my real estate agent. and He was like, Shadi, I have good news for you, brother. The lot that you placed like, you know, uh, an offer on of a house in Marconi, they accepted it and you're gonna get the lot. And I was like, man, like all praise to God, you know, yeah. all praise to the almighty. Uh, I was very patient, you know, and I didn't give up continue to push for, forward, uh, I was able to acquire the lot. Mm. Right? Um, you know, we came up with the idea of uh, building the first mobile gourmet coffee truck in Sacramento. Um, and of course, the beauty of a truck is you can send it anywhere throughout the greater Sacramento area. With a drive through you're limited to that, you know, that radius, right? Yeah. The truck, I could send it anywhere. And so we spent about, I wanna say seven months, man, building out the truck, I invested, over $120,000 into the truck, state of the art equipment, brand new, you know. The build for the truck finished in January, right, of 2020. Um, and we were ready to launch the truck to the public in February, right? Now, what had happened was we had 30 events lined up with iHeartRadio, Intercom Sacramento, and the um, CFO of Sacramento State University reached out to me he saw us on Good Day Sacramento to look into signing a contract to having the truck on campus. COVID-19 hit, right? COVID-19 hit. All events got canceled. Sac State got shut down. So as an entrepreneur, I embrace failure, brother. I embrace failure and I learn from it and I adapt. I, I would never give up because my family sacrificed so much, man, to uh, you know, give me an opportunity to pursue a life in the United States, to get an education here. Uh, for me to be in the position I'm in today at 26 years old is a huge blessing, and I don't take that for granted. So for me, failure, man, like I said, I embrace it, I learn from it, and I adapt, but I would never give up. You're hearing his entrepreneur story, and I'll admit, some of us would have thrown in the towel a long time ago because business will test your patience more than a Latina. But if you want to make it work, you got to tough it out. But if that doesn't work, get her pregnant so she doesn't go with anybody else. What's your mission over here? Because you said every month. Yes, yeah, so talk about the mission, right? So our motto is impacting lives one cup at a time. You see the Sacramento proud by the city for the city to serve the city. For me, brother, when I want to, you know, for my company, I wanted to meet something. I want I wanted to impact lives. I wanted to make a difference. Every two to three months, we try to partner up with a different nonprofit, right? To give back to the city of Sacramento, to give back to our community. Uh, we just finished our campaign in November where we partnered up with local nonprofit, My Sister's House. They've been around for 20 years. So we did something very simple. 25 cents from every drink for the month of November uh, is going went to My Sister's House, right? Uh, we did another one for the food bank back in March where $1 went to, from every drink to the Sacramento Food Bank. We partnered up with Sac Street Medicine and did a campaign where we handed out free cold brew to the unsheltered folks in need. Just a nice, simple campaign. And for December, uh, we're partnering up with Sac Street Med again 
and we're collecting jackets, socks, uh, clothing for the unsheltered folks to keep them warm this winter season, man, especially with everything going on with COVID, you know? Even during tough times, you give back, serve your community, and help others in need. And with Onyx Coffee, as I open up, you know, more drive-throughs and continue to branch out, I will run these kind of campaigns to shed light on issues that are not being talked about. That is the mission with Onyx Coffee, you know, impacting lives, giving back, minority-owned local. So if you want to start and grow a food truck business, make sure to keep watching because he's going to share not only what worked for him, but also what didn't work. That way, you don't got to go through the same thing and spend all that time and money. You know, we got you. We got you. And so I had to analyze the situation, right? Okay, no events, brand new business, no one knows about it. Where do I send the truck? COVID-19 just started, right? So I had the idea of parking the truck in the parking lot of my cosmetic surgery center, right, Precision MD, and turning it into a location. And we listed our services on uh, DoorDash, Uber Eats, Grubhub, Postmates, all four delivery platforms, right? Uh, and we started doing curbside pickup. When we started initially, this is how hungry we were for success. We launched our own delivery program, right? So we went live on Good Day Sacramento. Uh, we went live on, you know, on the news and we said, call or DM us on Instagram uh, and place your order. And we're gonna actually send drivers out from our team to deliver it to your house or business. That's how hungry we were for success, just to make it through the pandemic. We were willing to do whatever it takes. Mind you, I was only staffed at four people at the time. We tried to do that in the beginning, uh, and it wasn't something sustainable because I have two people working on the truck, right, for a shift. Okay, you get one or two people call you, right? So one of the one of the guys or girls has to leave, deliver the stuff. By the time they get back, the person on the truck gets bombarded with drinks. They can't keep up. We were only able to do it for maybe a month, right? But what did it do? It got our name out there and it showed the community, wow, these guys are really trying their best to make it through the pandemic and survive. Then, uh, we sat down with the team, we're like, man, how do we drive traffic to this location, right? Okay, let's build a beautiful outdoor seating area, right? So we put turf and we put tables and LED lights and we covered it up and uh, I'm very big on marketing. So we started running ads on Instagram and we upgraded our content creation. High quality photos, high quality videos. Um, you know, we partnered up with Yelp Sacramento and we did an elite week and we brought, you know, to like I think a hundred elite members down here um, to try out our drinks. Um, 700,000 impressions on Instagram. We're at nearly 8,000 followers. Certain posts of ours have gotten five, 600 shares. Um, on Google, we're, we're approaching 200 uh, reviews on Google. Uh, we're serving now between two to 3,000 customers a week. Uh, I have 16 employees now. Working on closing on a second property in Elk Grove. Uh, to build the second drive through um, So we have a lot going on, a lot of things we're working on. Um, and I remember when we started, man, we had days where we were making 50 bucks a day, right? $50 a day, and I was covering, you know, payroll out of pocket, paying a ton of money on marketing, yeah. expenses, and inventory, right? And what about the gas, you know? Oh, wait, you had it parked right there, right? Yeah, we had it parked. Oh, okay, so, no so gas, no, no gas no, on this one. No gas, right? No <laughs> gas and no generator, you know, because yeah. we have it plugged in. But, you know, it was tough, man. It was tough. And we had to overcome, you know, all challenges and, and, and really learn to adapt and push forward. Um, and, man, I remember, like, one month, we, we broke, like, $1,000 a day. Yeah. Like, this is incredible. You know, we started seeing an influx of traffic coming in. Huh. Um, and we started to do events. Yeah. So one of the first events we did was Spidey Squad for the kids. We had these guys dressed up as Spider-Man. Yeah. Kids came out, we had wow. about 500 people. They brought their kids out, they took pictures with them and it put us on the map, Yeah. right? We had, the line was maybe three hours long, right? And you can go back and actually view that video on Onyx Coffee's Instagram, the whole video of the event, right? We did another event, comedy night, with local comedian Lance Woods. Yeah. So we set up a stage next to the truck. Comedian came out, he performed. We had about 250 people there. Free event for the community. 
Uh, we did another one, very unique event. It was a gaming tournament where the winner won a PS5. And it was a Super Smash Brothers gaming tournament. So the entry was $20. We had about 75 gamers that came down. Um, and they were competing and, you know, we were selling drinks, energy drinks. Our energy drinks were going crazy, right? And, uh, man, it was a fun night. One of the guys won the PS5 and it put us on the map. And now I'm planning on doing that again. Once this COVID thing dies down, I want to do another one, maybe Call of Duty gaming tournament, right? Outdoor. And to, you know, like I said, manifest the next major coffee franchise in Sacramento and open up franchising opportunities for my team yeah. you know, as the as they work their way up within the company i want them to be able to own their own locations right similar to chick-fil-a yeah very similar business model so that that's the goal and we want to impact lives and serve the community you know we do a lot of non-profit work for the city and that's what we're all about Yo, so there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And once again, you want to know more about franchising, more in-depth questions, go give him a follow and go watch part two, which I'll put in the description below. And if you enjoyed this video, press the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye, everybody. Take care, you guys.